Welcome to the Blue Sky Vidcast, where the magic and history of Disneyland meet your imagination. Today, we are going to focus on one of our favorite lands in the park, New Orleans Square. Walt loved the Big Easy and often invoked its spirit at the park. Come with me and let's have some fun exploring five facts about Disneyland's New Orleans Square. We bet you don't know them all. If you like this video, click on that thumbs up to throw us a like and please subscribe. Now, fasten your buckle, pull on that yellow tab, and let's enjoy the ride. Hello everyone, I'm Don Morin, your host for the Blue Sky Vidcast. The famous introduction to Disneyland's weekly TV special on ABC showed five themed lands. Five lands that filled us with excitement and inspired our imaginations. But in fact, Walt Disney and the Imagineers had always wanted to include a spot on the banks of Rivers of America to celebrate the music, art, and architecture of one of their favorite cities. New Orleans Square did not open until 1966, 11 years after the park opened, but Walt involved the thrill of New Orleans since the start of the park. On opening day, during the famous ABC broadcast, Disney created a New Orleans scene with the Firehouse 5 Plus 2 playing for a large group of brightly dressed dancers roaring back in the 20s. Walt was also fond of enjoying a mint julep on the Mark Twain that used to be available mid-deck. And speaking of the river, early on, Disneyland started having jazz at night on the river and had a huge New Orleans style celebration and bringing artists like Benny Goodman and Louis Armstrong to participate in the revelry. In 1966, Disneyland opened New Orleans Square and it instantly became one of the most popular spots in the park. It still is. So what do you say folks? Let's take a look at six really fun facts about New Orleans Square. For you, Lillian, Walt Disney wanted to pay tribute to his wife, which is something he often did, by including some fine shops inside Disneyland. Lillian Disney was an avid antiquer and loved shopping for and collecting fine antiques. He thought if she loved it, then the people would too. New Orleans Square was the first land inside Disneyland to prioritize the inclusion of fine shops and restaurants while still having huge show-stopping attractions. Attractions that are both highlighted yet hidden away. Most people have no idea what part of the Pirates of the Caribbean they are stepping over as they stroll through the streets of New Orleans Square. Today the square has six shops where you can find fine jewelry, a perfumery, and delicate glass figurines amongst the more typical Disney merchandise. We could put the restaurant inside the ride. Walt never set out to be a restaurateur, but he certainly succeeded at it. It almost happened once with his enchanted tiki room, but they ended up leaving the food out and let the birds stand solo. But with the Blue Bayou restaurant, Walt Disney created something new, something that resonated and inspired a new chapter in the restaurant industry. If you didn't know, the Blue Bayou is actually the first scene of the Pirates of the Caribbean, setting the mood for the ride as boats glide by happy diners, enjoying one of Disneyland's finest menus on a lush and inviting patio. Winds in the east, mist coming in, like something is brewing, about to begin. Construction for New Orleans Square began in 1961, but unlike when the park was first built, things were moving pretty slowly. In 1964, Disneyland was working hard in lots of areas of the park to improve the quality of the audience experience and was continually putting money, many times his own, plussing and expanding every aspect of the park. But Walt Disney Studios had not had a huge hit for a few years, since 1961's 101 Dalmatians in fact. Swiss Family Robinson had been well received and sold well, but it had also been expensive to film. As a result, capital was lacking and construction at New Orleans Square had slowed to a crawl. And to be sure, it was a costly endeavor. He often joked that it cost more than Disneyland did, and heck, even more than the Louisiana Purchase did itself. And adjusting for inflation, he was right. 
But with the massive success of Mary Poppins in 1964, Disney finally got the capital it needed to complete the project in fine style. Thanks, Mary. We knew you could do it. Don't stay away too long. Walt called on Dorothea Redmond, the illustrious scenic designer responsible for Gone with the Wind, to create renderings for his private luxury apartment in New Orleans Square. He wanted his apartment to be a place he could entertain VIP guests, which in his case meant some of the most powerful people in the world. But the apartment was not completed before Walt passed away and was left abandoned for some time. In 1987, the space was renovated into the Disney Gallery, a shop focusing on imagineering artwork that entertained guests for 20 years and is missed by many. Do you remember this location? In 2007, it was changed into the Dream Suite and was renovated according to Redmond's original designs. As part of a promotional drawing, guests were able to stay overnight in the suite. I always wondered how much of New Orleans Square they had access to at night. And if it was quiet, or if you had a loud rehearsal going on outside your window all night long. In 2014, part of the space was repurposed into 21 Royal, a private luxury dining experience where the head chef of Napa Rose and Club 33 will create a private meal just for you. It sounds incredible, and at a price of $15,000, it must be. Walt sure knew how to pick a view. The shops are nice, but if only they had a pirate museum or something. That's right, New Orleans Square opened in 1966 with ambiance to spare, but it was several more months before Pirates of the Caribbean would have its doors ripped open by plundering pirates. Of course, the water attraction was originally planned to be a walk-through wax museum, but changed after the great success of the It's a Small Ride system at the New York World's Fair in 1964. There actually was a small pirate museum and arcade at New Orleans Square for years, offering nostalgic shooter games like the Freebooter Shooter and the Peter Pan-themed Captain Hook. And although it was never really a museum, having those great unique arcade games around today sure would make for a great one. Walt Disney, the man is missed, but his spirit inspires our future. Walt presided over the opening of the New Orleans Square on July 24, 1966. It was one of his last public appearances anywhere. It may even be that they moved the opening of the land up so Walt could be there while still healthy. Club 33, the Haunted Mansion, and Pirates of the Caribbean were not ready to open, but Walt was still heavily involved in their creation the last attractions he worked on. We know that Imagineers even created vehicles so that Walt could view the scenes of the Pirates of the Caribbean from the audience perspective before they were ready for water. Walt loved New Orleans and his creation at Disneyland, New Orleans Square. I like to think that he was very proud of what he accomplished and rested easy knowing he had finished another great project. At the dedication, Walt invited the mayor of the real New Orleans, Victor Shiro, to speak and he said of the land, We are so proud you have done this in your beautiful Disneyland. And he said of Walt, You have done more than any man that I know of for the children of our great country and I think that not only the children but the parents appreciate you very much. Well that's it for today folks. We hope you enjoy this visit to another land in the park. Thanks for joining me, I'm Don Morin, and the Blue Sky Vidcast, where the magic and history of Disneyland meet your imagination. Be sure to catch our last video where we had fun in Frontierland. We are doing a series of fun fact videos working our way around every land in the park. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Be sure to grab all your belongings on the way out and enjoy the rest of your Disney day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.